Want to learn how to make videos like us? Find out after the video how we use insights from vidIQ as our secret YouTube weapon and get a 98% discount. You heard that right, 98% off. But you've got to stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can try vidIQ for yourself for just $1 for 30 days and start making your own hit YouTube videos in no time. Venice, the city of dreams, the canal-lined Italian port city is a place of mystery, magic, and romance. And soon it might all be gone. There's no other city like Venice in the world, because it really isn't a single city at all. Venice is composed of a group of 118 small islands, separated by canals and connected by a series of bridges, all located in the Venetian lagoon. This enclosed bay seems like a strange place to live, but it's home to over 250,000 people and countless tourists visit per year. It's not hard to see why, it is stunning. Not only can you see the scenes and taste some spectacular Italian cuisine, but no visit to Italy is complete without a ride through the canals, courtesy of one of the famous gondoliers. Maybe he'll sing. But all its strengths might be its greatest weakness. In 2022, Venice once again banned the massive cruise liners that frequently visit Italy from sailing into the center of the city. For now, these ships and their countless passengers will have to park at the industrial port of Maghera Island instead. The main reason for this is to protect the integrity of the Venetian lagoon, the body of water that keeps Venice livable. And nature gives the people very little leeway. That's because the Venetian lagoon is surprisingly shallow, only 34 feet deep on average and the city surrounding it is built to accommodate that, and it means that a slight shift could mean disaster. When the seasonal high water tides hit Venice every year, floods devastate the city. Countless antique buildings are damaged by the seawater, resulting in millions of dollars of property damage, and it's hard to predict when it'll happen again. Making things worse, the sea levels seem to be getting higher and higher, and something massive entering the water, like a huge cruise ship causing a wave in its wake, can trigger a flood on its own. The attempt to ban the ships prevented the problem, but it's a band-aid on a stab wound, because the source of the problem is much bigger. The city is slowly sinking, disappearing below the waves. More and more buildings are irreparably damaged, while more and more locals leave the city, discouraged by the constant challenging conditions and worsening climate. It's estimated that by the year 2100, Venice could simply disappear, swallowed by the seas. The heavy traffic is one culprit, but it's far from the only city to experience this problem. Around the world, cities like Jakarta and New Orleans find themselves threatened by floodwaters. Things are so bad in Indonesia that they're planning to replace Jakarta as their capital with Nusantara, a city they're still in the process of building. You know the situation is bad when a country plans to move its capital city down the road. As climate change gets worse, the polar ice caps continue to melt. And as the ice caps melt, the water floods the oceans and seas, and the water levels rise. Anything close to sea level, especially places along the coasts and islands, are a first line of fire. Even some of the most populated places in the world, like the coastal regions of Florida and California, are potentially going to be swallowed up eventually. But no place is more vulnerable than water-ringed, low-lying Venice, and time is running out to save the city's rich cultural heritage and its place as an economic powerhouse of Italy. But options are limited. Until recently, most efforts have focused on limiting the environmental damage caused by the tourists. The banning of the massive cruise ships helped keep water levels under control, but likely hurt Venice's bottom line. As the canal views are a big draw for Venice-bound cruises, many conservationists have urged Venice residents to avoid the city altogether. But with the city's dwindling population, many people rely on visitors to make ends meet. And preserving a city doesn't help much if there's no one around to keep it running. So it was clear that something else would need to be done, and the scientists stepped up. The problems were visible for a long time, with work on solving the crisis beginning as far back as the 1980s. Even before climate change got worse, the seasonal tide peaks hitting the Adriatic Sea and the Venetian Lagoon tend to peak between autumn and spring, when the astronomical tides are bolstered by seasonal winds and the city finds much of itself underwater. Venice is always near the water, but during these seasons, visitors are advised to bring some waterproof boots. It's common for the canals to spill over into the city streets and leave tourists trudging along through an inch or more of water. As the crisis got worse, a plan was hatched. The Italian Ministry of Infrastructure began working in 1987, along with the Venetian authorities on what would become the most important environmental defense and restoration project in Italy's history to give Venice a powerful defense system that could fend off nature and prevent further damage to the city. It would be called MOSE, or MOS, for the Italian name Modulo Sperimentale Elettromechanico, or Experimental Electromechanical Module. 
The heart of the project is an integrated system of rows of mobile gates around the inlets. When they slam shut, the most vulnerable part of the city would be protected from floodwaters, but the project was much more complicated than that. It also aimed at shoring up the lagoon itself and reinforcing it with concrete and other materials to create a strong foundation. It's a huge project and it won't come fast or cheap. After over 15 years of planning, Moe's began construction in 2003, with a plan to finish in 2011. That became 2018, and now it's tentatively planned to be fully completed in 2025. Protecting the whole city from floodwaters isn't a simple process, and it's also not a low-cost one. It's estimated to cost upwards of $7 billion when the whole thing is completed, but if it works, it could be a remarkable achievement. The most important step is to protect the city from the constant surge of low-level floodwaters, which are making the city hazardous to residents and causing salt water and moisture damage to the buildings. The barriers are designed to deal with larger floods, so to prevent these smaller floods, construction workers are aiming to raise the quay sides and add paved barriers that would turn back the floodwaters and protect the older buildings. They're also working to add more salt marshes and mud flats to absorb and redirect the waters to keep them out of the city center and to fix any damage to the smaller islands. Many canals and channels have also become clogged with debris over the years, which means a lot of the project is the less than glamorous plumbing job. And much of the work involves cleaning up after people. Pollution has been a big part of the problem in Venice, with many small islands being used as trash dumps. This is particularly common in industrial areas, and dredging the canals makes it easier for the water to flow. Many industrial canals, which are no longer needed after the industrial decline in the area, are being sealed off so the flow of water will be consolidated and be easier to regulate. And while the bulk of the work is focused on controlling the water flow, experts are also restoring many damaged buildings to ensure Venice remains beautiful well into the future. But while this might solve some of the flooding concerns, they still haven't solved one of their biggest problems. Most floods during the year are minor, making for a soggy walk through the city and leaving damage in its wake, but occasionally the water surges much higher and few things are more devastating than a massive flood. New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina and Japan during the earthquake-related tsunami of 2011 both saw mass casualties and destruction that still hasn't been repaired today. While Venice hasn't been subject to a flood of that caliber yet, many worry that it's only a matter of time before a flood surge washes the city away. So the race is on. The goal was to design gates that would protect Venice from flood surges up to just under 10 feet, but that's a work in progress and has been for a long time. Right now, the plan is to target three inlets with the gates, the Lido, Malamocco, and Gioggia inlets that provide most of the water to the city of Venice. These are the three most vulnerable spots, and it's estimated that being able to block these inlets from the flood could prevent most of the water from entering the Venice city center. But there is one problem with the construction. This is a massive operation involving building small harbors, locks, and many buildings needed to run the complex machinery. It's one of the largest water infrastructure projects since the Panama Canal that linked the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans way back in 1914. But this project is more about survival. When a major construction project is started, it's fairly common to shut down the target areas so crews can work as efficiently as possible, as many commuters have found out when they're trying to get to work. But that's not possible when you're working with an essential road or a waterway, and so the masterminds behind the Mose project were tasked with figuring out how to construct the locks without interrupting boat traffic. They ended up coming up with a plan, but it definitely prolonged the construction project and has led to an increase in the budget. And with a project this delicate, every little detail matters. Venice doesn't have many land connections between its islands, so it's been tricky to get all the supplies to the construction site via water without overwhelming the area and causing shipping delays. Most of the machines and supplies are set up on temporary water areas to allow construction with minimal interference and construction on the three inlets is proceeding on pace, but not all of them are being built at the same pace. The Lido Inlet plans for two rows of gates at the north and south of the inlet, with a small craft harbor and two basins controlling the traffic. This project involved massive draining of the area to construct the main housing structures, and it was then flooded again. Construction is continuing with the gates being in place and tested, while a new island was constructed in the middle of the inlet to allow technicians to monitor the gates. A massive 3,000-foot breakwater will accompany the project to help fend off floodwaters, but that's not the case for all of the inlets. The Malamocco Inlet is in the earliest stage of construction of the three, with a temporary construction site being set up along the basin and housing structures being built, but the gates haven't been fully built yet. A lock that'll be able to close the inlet to large ships when the gates are operating was installed in 2014, as well as the foundations where the gates will be placed. A massive breakwater of over 4,000 feet has been completed, 
and that just means that they need to finish work on the gates. And then there's the third inlet, Chioja. Generally considered to be a critical point for the project, Chioja has a tricky balancing act to complete. Needing to function as a small craft harbor where a large number of ships can safely travel to even when the gates are in operation. This inlet is a hub for fishing activity, and that facility has been completed. The seabed has been prepped for the gates to be installed, the basin has been drained and used as a construction harbor, and a smaller breakwater has been completed. Everything seems to be proceeding smoothly, but delays soon followed. And no project of this level has ever been completed before, but that doesn't mean the technology used was entirely new. At the core of the most project is a series of hinges that control the gates. Not only do they hold the gates in place and link them to the operating structure, but they'll be carefully designed to withstand the harsh onslaught of the water and resist seawater damage. However, because nothing is foolproof, they'll be designed with plenty of reserve elements in storage and will be constantly monitored for any damage. After all, they might just hold the entire project and the future of Venice in their metal hands. Which raises one critical question, will it actually work? Ever since the project was created, its defenders argued it was essential, and without it, there might not be a Venice to defend. While it would require extensive damage to some of the natural structures surrounding Venice, they say the project would leave Venice stronger and more fortified against the elements, and that's worth the rapidly growing price tag. They argue the science is sound, the gates will stand the test of time, and the cost of upkeep once completed will be minimal. Needless to say, the naysayers disagree. Ever since the start, the Mose project has had many vocal detractors. Large coalitions of Italian politicians opposed the project from the beginning, arguing it's not actually a conservation project, but one that'll transform Venice into something entirely new and remove much of the city's historic charm. They say the changes are not gradual and reversible, but rather stand the risk of turning the area surrounding the Venetian lagoon into just another industrial area. They also point to the massive price tag, claiming that the project is just a gift to the construction industry and will never be complete. And as the finishing date moved further and further into the future, some supporters even had to admit they had a point. But then there was another group complaining and they weren't afraid to get much louder. Venice is essentially in a war against nature as the waters rise, and there are a lot of people taking the side of nature. Environmental activists have condemned the project since day one, pointing out that its impact will be much larger than just the areas where the gates are being constructed. The project requires complex leveling of the sea base, flattening it completely where the barriers are being installed. The entire lagoon bed has to be reinforced, and this could have a massive impact on the delicate ecosystem of the lagoon. They also claim the massive construction and disruption of the lagoon could impact the behavior of migratory birds due to pollution and noise. They filed multiple appeals, but all have ultimately come down in favor of the project. And the defenders say that in the end it'll all be worth it. But will it be? Dealing with climate change is a tricky matter, because no one knows exactly how the future will play out. Venice is making projections based on current climate change patterns, but those can change in a hurry, and if the flood surges become bigger than expected, it could become nothing more than an overly expensive eyesore to a doomed city. Alternatively, if the end result is rosier than projected for the city, then the lagoon could be defaced permanently for no reason. And others ask, is all the money going where it should? The project is expensive, and thus far construction seems to be proceeding as planned, but in 2014 the project was hit with a massive shakeup, when 35 people, including the current mayor of Venice, was arrested on misused public funds. Authorities revealed that Mayor Giorgio Orsoni had received illicit funds from the organization behind the Mose project, which he used to fund his campaign for mayor. He was placed on house arrest, later pled guilty, and didn't serve any jail time. In total, it's estimated that more than 20 million euros might have been siphoned away from the project over the years, and with a project of this size, that might have been treated as little more than a rounding error. But no one has answered the most significant question. Will it work? Some people say the entire goal of the project is fundamentally off. Scientist Luigi Dalpos, a hydraulics expert, claims the technology behind the project is obsolete and will actually make the situation worse. As the floodwaters continue to rise, the project would only work by keeping the gates permanently raised, which would render the lagoon unable to drain properly, leading to massive algae growth that would turn the iconic lagoon green and create massive health hazards for anyone living there. But is there an alternative? Ultimately, no. No one has been able to come up with one, making Moe's the best hope to secure Venice's future. That's why the Italian government has turned back all attempts to stop the project, as have the courts. And at this point, it's so far into being constructed that everyone's just quietly hoping they haven't financed the biggest failed project in Italian history. Once it's complete, the next step will begin, clearing out all the construction equipment, restoring the lagoon to its previous condition, and restoring the area's natural beauty. 
But recently, the system faced its biggest test yet. It was July 2020, and Italy had just made it through the devastating first European wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. The people needed something to give them hope, and it was decided that for the first time, Mose was far enough along that a full test could be conducted. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte activated the 78 mobile barriers, and they all worked, serving as a proof of concept for the entire system. But they're not anywhere near ready to take on the 10-foot swells the system was designed for. But they are getting there, and could potentially take on swells up to 4 feet right now. And only a few months later, they would be called on again. On October 3, 2020, Mose was activated again, but this time it wasn't a test. The fall floodwaters were surging, and the famous Piazza San Marco was threatened once again. So the barriers were activated, and they held. The city was spared the wrath of a flood that was becoming more and more frequent, but this was only a temporary fix. Bigger and stronger flood surges would be coming, and construction would need to continue quickly in order to fend them off. And time was ticking down. Currently, Mose is scheduled for full construction in 2025, with all three gates being fully operational and ready to handle high-level surges. Will it happen, or will nature get in the way? No one knows what direction climate change is going to take, but the people in charge of Venice are determined that no matter what the world looks like, the famous city of canals will endure. Now, are you wondering how we come up with the ideas for videos? It's all thanks to vidIQ. vidIQ is a super powerful YouTube tool that basically acts like a cheat code for picking video topics. With vidIQ, you can see exactly how many people are searching for a topic each month, how much competition there is for that topic from other creators, and what videos from those creators are trending. Put all that information together and you can find the perfect video, like we did hopefully with this one. So go check it out for yourself and get vidIQ for just $1 for 30 days. That's 98% off the regular price, but only at vidIQ.com slash the info show. For an ominous look at the future, check out why 2023 will be the worst year ever, or check out this video instead.